Hey guys, Mike here. So, oh boy, what a day in the market. And I tell you, there was something that was green today. It was up over 2% that was really surprising. I don't know if you caught it. And you probably, if you were looking at things going, there's no way that thing could be up over 2% because what was happening to the Magnificent 7 today? Hmm, they were all red, right? And so we're going to get into all of that. And we'll definitely keep the chart stuff short because we got CPI coming out tomorrow. And so that could absolutely shift things pre-market immediately. And so we'll get into a few of them. And look at really what you need to be paying attention to when it came to what was actually green today. And it was pretty important to me. But I want to start off because I saw this and then one of the members sent this to me, so I appreciate it. But it was a debate between two people who I know one I've showed you guys. I think the other one I've showed to the members. But they approach the market so differently, right, which is great to see. And they've, been, they've made some great calls this year. And they've been on pretty much the same page, even though they approach it totally differently. But now they're in two different camps, right? One is going heavy short and one is going heavy long. And this is when it gets really interesting, right? And so the ones I'm, I don't think you guys are aware of, I know I've done uh, members videos of this guy in it, is uh, Andy Constant. He's the one to the left right there. And this guy right here actually shorted the market in July and then called the bottom for October 31st, went long. And so now he has changed what he is doing. And then the guy to the right, to the over there is uh, Cam Carson, which I know, or Jim Carson, I should say, excuse me, uh, which I know I've showed you guys. And he's the one that runs a volatility fund and everything. So his is all about the flows, right? Andy's is all about the bond market and yields and this and this macro stuff and everything. And then uh, Jim's all about the flows, options, and volatility and everything like that. And so now here is where Andy is at right now. Um, in terms of my positioning, after this huge rally from the October bottom, and I've begun, I've sold assets, and I've in in recent days I've gotten very aggressively short both bonds and stocks. And that interview was like last Thursday, I believe it was, if I'm not mistaken. So that's very recent. And of course, Jim, who uh, tends to talk a lot longer about his stuff, you know, he he's the opposite. He's the Santa rallies coming, flows, reinvestment, macro, all this stuff, right? Up to at least uh, January 17th, that is. You know, that's what he's seeing. So now they're on the two opposite ends of the spectrum after both calling the high in July 31st, the bottom on October 31st, all that stuff. And so we get to see who wins out. So, you know, I will be paying attention for sure. But it's just, it's fun to see two guys who have been doing this a long time who approach it totally different come up with two different theses now, right, of what's happening. So put in the comments uh, who you think is correct on that. The fact that he's shortened bonds and stocks, you know, that's, that's pretty interesting to say the least. And I will say one thing I read today, and I'll, I'll try to find something for you on this. And for those who like to talk about the debt and stuff, it's like we're, we're setting a record for the amount of debt or bonds we're issuing for government debt. And then next year it's supposed to increase by like 23% or something. I mean, it's just amazing how much debt is going out there, which of course is what? It's a lot of supply of bonds right which is usually not good for bonds but uh you know we'll see so now some of you guys talked to me or asking about gold and you said well how in the world is gold prices going up and i started digging into this i'm not really into gold myself but i am curious to see why these prices are going up and here's what i found for you guys check this out so gold seems to be disconnected from fundamentals okay gold price is going up but the U.S. 10-year Treasury is going down. You can see they've pretty much been in sync since 2010, right? Probably even before that, but that's how far this chart goes back. Now, investor demand continues to fall. Gold ETF holdings have been going down. Gold price has been going up. And what I mean by uh, the ETF holdings and things like that, you can see right here, bullish investors. This is from Bloomberg, like maybe even just about a month ago, I believe it was. And there's been six straight months of outflows on these gold-backed ETFs, right? It was inflows coming in the first five months. And so this takes us through November of this year. So who's been buying heavily? Well, it's been the central banks. The central banks, this come out in October, have been on a huge buying spree of gold. How do we know this? We can pull up the most recent chart I could find for you guys. And you can see 2022 was a pretty much a record. This goes back to 2010. But that's the dark parts of third quarter. You can see we've already eclipsed 2022 now, right? So now we're in the fourth quarter. So you pretty much know we're going to probably eclipse that too. But you can see how much they bought in 2022 as well. And so they've been the ones 
really heavily buying gold right now. China is actually leading this, if I'm not mistaken. At least that's what I read. And so feel free to share in the comments any more data you have on this. And of course, gold got up to where that main key level I showed you guys a chart on, then sold back down. Okay, so we'll see if it starts to continue to pop back up. But that's who's really heavily buying gold right now. And put in the comments why you think that is. Now, today, what was interesting, what was up over 2%, which was shocking, was the QQEW. That's the equal weight ETF for the Qs. The Qs were only up like 0.8%, but you see the SPY was much weaker. But what, what was up? The RSP, the equal weight of SPY, was almost three times that, right? IWM, pretty much, I mean, it was, it was all over the place. A little red, a little green. Not much happening there. HYG, which we have talked about, and I'll get more into that later on this week. Red again. Uh, dollar green, yields green. Again, everything kind of out of whack. And here's the MAG7. That's what was so crazy about this. And so I had to look up and say, well, you know, H, uh, QQEW, what's the holdings? And so, you know, remember, it's not completely like everything's 1% down the board, but it's about as equal weight as you can get, right? But all of these are red. I mean, NVIDIA got all the way down to like 458, I believe it was. It got bought up. A lot of these got bought up on the dip and stuff, but they were red all day long. And it's even like XLK, for example, 50% of its holdings are Apple, Microsoft, and NVIDIA, and it was still up almost a full percent today, which is amazing, right? That means the other stocks were just, you know, absolutely going crazy, which I'll show you. And what's interesting about this, you know, talking about breath and everything else. And real quick, guys, if you can go ahead and hit that like button for me, help people find this video, I really appreciate it. And if you want to give me a double help today, you can hit that subscribe button if you like the content. Because even though you've had this crazy rally in November, still moving up in December, kind of just consolidating December, really. But the S&P 500 in index, the percentage of members with new 52-week highs, it's only 6%. If you go back to that rally we had from like March through uh, basically beginning of July or mid-July, you can see it got up all the way to 16%. And to me, that rally wasn't anywhere near is what you saw going on in November, but still only 6% reached new 52-week highs here, which is just amazing. Now, what actually pulled us up for the day was this. You got your semiconductors. I mean, they were absolutely on fire, but here's what's great to see this. When you talk about breath and everything else, what do you see? NVIDIA is red and all the rest of them are way up. This is what you want to see because for too many months, NVIDIA is either dragging them up are dragging them down and now the semiconductors hopefully have broken away from nvidia and they're starting to do their own thing now and people are starting to invest in them and nvidia is just kind of doing its thing but it's not having that direct correlation right now and you kind of hope that stays that way and you can see amd absolutely just crushing it i mean this thing's on steroids uh breaking its july's high right there up another four and a half percent on the day you know you're kind of looking and trying to figure out where is this thing going to go next and really i mean 140 it's going to be your next level. It, you know, it's basically going to drag this, what was a supply area, and now hopefully becomes a demand area, which you're looking at here. I mean, I know it moved through it really quickly, but you would think it's going to come back, try to retest it, turn into a support area. And then if we sit here and just kind of zoom in on this thing, you can see 140 clearly is going to be your next target. After that, it's going to be 152. And so, uh, and again, I mean, I was happy to see it break away from NVIDIA, but Intel, all of them did. You know, it was kind of amazing to see because it's not like the dollar was super weak today. Yields weren't, you know, super weak today or anything. But these semiconductors, you know, big money was just rolling in them, all right? Because what retail wasn't pushing all these semiconductors up. There's no way that was happening. So we'll mark 140 on here, and that'll be our next target from where it's at right now. Now, if you look at Tesla, what did it do today? Shockingly, it stayed in the wedge. I can't believe it. I can't believe big money would absolutely do that to us and keep this in a wedge. You know, I, I, it's just amazing to see it, but I guess they don't want to give it up, man. They don't want to drop out of this wedge. You want to stay in it. And when you really look at Tesla, I mean, look at that consolidation. That's rare for Tesla to be this long sitting there just in this really tight range. So it is going to be an explosive freaking move. Whichever way it goes, I mean, a lot. Of, I mean, people want it to, you know, obviously explode up. Which, of course, you're looking at the November highs. If it does finally break out of this wedge, will it be tomorrow's news that does it? If the market goes absolutely berserk, obviously, then it'll be November's highs. But if the market tanks tomorrow or during FOMC meeting, this level between that 231, 233, it's bounced like 20 times or something like that. Okay, if that does break, then yes, 225. It'll fill that RTH gap. 
And so that's going to be the level to watch on that. If not, it's going to be 252, which would be November's high, which isn't that, I mean, it's only 5% up for Tesla. You know, that's a really good day, 5%. And so, but again, this one right here, yeah, I mean, I want to pick, say it's going to go higher, but then again, it's if the market's tanking, if this is one of those, you know, rug pulls on you, then no, of course, Tesla's not just going to go, well, I'm going to go higher and everybody's going lower, right? And so again, still in the wedge, right? Still in the wedge. I've been saying it for two months, it seems like. Now, a couple, you know, kind of off the note here, watch Airbnb here because it's kind of in this, almost like, I mean, it's not a quite a megaphone pattern, but it almost looks like it, right? And it's right at the top of this megaphone pattern, which of course is resistance, getting right into the overbought territory, but it's still the momentum. It looks good. I mean, it does look good. So again, if this breaks out, turns it back into support, you know, this one's going to continue to move higher because it's had, a, it's had a pretty dang good move, right? And it's got plenty of support on the bottom right there, but it's been, you know, moving through what? That volume gap right there. That's exactly where we just cut through it like a knife through butter. But you can see this is pretty decent resistance up here where it's at right now. I mean, it's moved up 26% in a pretty short amount of time. You do have a bullish MACD cross on the weekly down there. And so let's see if you get a rejection here. Uh, Shopify we talked about, another one is just consolidating, pushing up against that trend line right there, basing out that support right around that like 72 area. And if this one drops, obviously 64 is going to be really good support for it to fill a gap, hit support to get the balance. The moving averages are all pointing up, moving up. The 50s crossing the 100. So this one looks pretty good unless it has some crazy news. And it's had such a big move. I mean, 52%. In like a month that that's a that's a huge move so you know if it gets some kind of move down to try to consolidate more before it moves up then i mean if you're a long-term investor I, I think i'd rather see that and buy at 66 to get the bounce back up uh just because it's been such a huge move now obviously what's transportation doing transportation is still going green right it's starting to get up in this volume gap right here and so you can absolutely see it go to about that level right there and if that happens guess what else is going to go to all-time highs it's going to be the Dow Jones. It's only one point like three percent away now. And so it'll most likely be the first one to get there, like I said, on Sunday. Again, this will depend on CPI, depend on the Fed, all that stuff. And you know, who's right? Was it gonna be Jim Cameron? Is it gonna be the other gentleman, right? Andy. So, you know, a lot of that has to do with that. Now, if you're into Chinese stocks or in Bob and stuff like that, look at this. They've obviously come out with new stuff, right? They, they're going to throw more stuff at the wall, see what sticks and everything. But you'll notice most of the Chinese stocks, almost a lot of them, were green today. What was it? JD and Baba, okay? And so you can sell that now this is starting to become like a company thing. Like, which company is it? Okay, and both these are e-commerce companies. And, you know, unfortunately for them, they're struggling, right? Because you can see, plain day, a lot of others are green. And when you look at this chart, it's always hard to make ADR charts out because they just don't trade like other stocks do. You know, they just don't follow the same rules. I mean, I thought, okay, maybe here's that gap. Maybe it bounces for you. Maybe it's aiming for this gap, right? It's the RTH gap right there. Maybe uh, that's what it's aiming for to finally get a bounce. Uh, but, you know, the government's throwing everything at the wall, see what sticks. Some of the other stocks you know, are starting to respond. Let's see if they get like three or four days behind them. And, you know, that's what you got to look for. If the other stocks are green and this one and JD and whatever other ones go red, then that's a problem. Okay. Like I said, I know people that are buying Bob right now and you know, hopefully it'll, it'll start to bounce for them because it's crazy when you look at the revenue they're bringing now versus what they brought during the IPO and yet the stock price is almost the same. So, you know, uh, it's kind of crazy. But anyway, tomorrow, here it is, core inflation rate month over month, year over year is going to come out at 830 pre-market as you can see. You can see they expect it to say the same on the yearly. Monthly, they actually expect it to go up. So the bar is low, okay? Inflation rate month over month, year over year, you can see dropped to 3.1. And then actually expect the month over month to go up to 0.1. So again, the bar is low. And then there's a 30-year bond auction that's happening at 1 o'clock. And this has been the biggest one to sell because yields have come down. So guess what bond buyers might want? They might want a little bit more sugar to buy that long-term uh, deal, okay? And so let's see what happens on that. We did have the 10-year auction today, and it actually went okay. It could have been worse, but you know, it actually did go okay. But again, the 30-year, a lot different than the 10, right? So you're talking about the long-term stuff. So they might, and so if that spikes, obviously it's gonna hurt equity. So we'll keep an eye on that at one o'clock. If that one goes well, and that, that really does, and, and the CPI comes in where it's supposed to come in at or under because the bar is so freaking low. 
you know, and you would think with like rents being down, oil being down, you know, I'm even seeing reports of housing prices come down. So, you know, people were talking about the discord, then yeah, I mean, that could absolutely put, you know, jet fuel uh, on the fire right there. And so we'll see how it plays out. Let me know what your predictions are, are uh, for inflation and stuff like that. Do you think it's going to be in line below it or do you think it's going to come in high? And so and another thing is you always see this too. You, you can't predict this. But it's like, is it going to be a sell the news event? And because we've had, you know, this run up into it, like it's going to be like, oh, it came in line. Let's go red, right? And so a lot of people think that's why you saw the mega caps down today because not that they want to sell the news tomorrow because they want to go ahead and get as much juice out of them as they can. So sell them off the day before and then pump them uh, tomorrow. So it's going to be a fun uh, tomorrow and the next day. Extremely volatile. So you're going to see some massive, massive swings this week. There's no doubt about that. So just buckle up, click, click, because that's what it's going to be. So anyway, hope you guys got something out of it. Hit that like and subscribe button, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.